pretty sure the whole world has seen everything. So yeah. Yeah. Right. All There's right, guys. <laughs> here, here we here we go. Um, week number thirty-seven of twenty-five, um, the Unframe of Mind show, and this hey is guys. here. Here we oh, here we go. Thanks, Haley. Um, you didn't pause the video. Week number thirty-seven of. Jeez, now everybody has to hear my dumb punchlines twice. How rude! I'm, I'm going to fire. Put it on a mute. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to cut your pay in half. Just for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So just a real quick brief intro to the topics for anybody who's watching and wants to know what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about free speech and IQ, uh, recent Supreme Court rulings, March for Our Rights rally in Nashville coming up this Saturday, um, general lesson on critical thinking and a blockchain innovation of the week. And if we have time, we're going to talk about a Netflix movie I saw that was pretty fr freaking interesting. At any rate, so welcome to the Unframe of Mind show where we have uncomfortable conversations without a condom. And here to help me out with this today is a few of my friends. Um, we've got, uh, I'll just read from left to right here. We've got Anthony Trawick. He's here from, he's here, yeah. he's, he's local here with me. Um, and he's got a, uh, a non profit. If you don't quit, every time you laugh, dude, you're. <laughs> <laughs> so no was he I thought no he was doing something totally different. Everyone says that. Everyone says that. I, all I hear is the hinge on your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> you should WD forty that thing. All right, so so I got Anthony Trawick, and he he's actually I, I wanted to uh, give him a, a minute to talk about his um, organization, Tennessee for Families. Um, he's been on the show before and talked about it, and he's he's going to be helping me out with a new segment in exchange for me to give him a shout out for this um, every week. So you guys can check that out. Um, you want to you want to tell him a little bit about that real quick? Yeah. So basically, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. So basically, it started back during the Gatlinburg fires. Um, a bunch of friends got together and wanted to do something to help a bunch of people. So we decided to help out and send uh, about nine uh, pull behind trailers out to Gatlinburg and helped out a lot of families. And then <clears throat> we did a, a huge donation drive um, for the victims of Hurricane Harvey. And we ended up sending four tractor trailers worth of uh donations down to the area that were affected by the hurricanes and you know obviously the floods um ever since then we have helped more locally than we have abroad um we actually did a family for christmas where we took up uh, clothes and toys for kids and you know for the parents to give them you know gift cards to kind of help them get through the holidays um beyond that we've done some uh work with the uh, inner city schools of lebanon and making sure that the kids have got jackets and gloves, hats, toboggans, things that they could use, you know, that they just don't have. Um, since then, um, we've got a few other events that are coming up in the next couple of months. And, you know, and of course on our Facebook page, we'll, we'll give those details out. So, you know, we're just about helping the community. We're just a group of friends and, you know, we just want to make a difference, you know, where we're, where we're at. So that's pretty much it. All right. Cool. Cool. That's uh, that's awesome. And, and and I'll have the link for that in the in the description if anybody wants to check that out. Um, and uh, next up, we got my friend uh, Keith Melvin. He's he's been my friend since, you know, God only knows when. Um, OK, Sorry. like like 10th grade. <laughs> specifically. At any rate, he's, he's been on the show before as well. So I, I appreciate you hopping in, hopping in and joining no, us. No, no problem. I'm just hanging out with my hairy pussy. <laughs> Jesus Sexy. <laughs> hey, this is a family-friendly show. That kind of turned me on, man. Come on. <laughs> Getting uncomfortable already. All right. Um, is is there anything you want to any any uh, uh, specific things you want to talk about, Keith? As far as what you do and who you are. Um, um just or? just a computer nerd during the day, doing the the best I can to. Uh, get everyone through the through the day and not to uh, do anything too terribly uh, idiotic. <laughs> uh, uh, take what I learned from there and I, I bring it to the the college that I teach at and really just try to pay my uh, my knowledge forward that I that I learn and try to make the the world a little better uh, place than I found it. It's about the the best I I can do or about anyone can do. It's a hell of a philosophy, man. All right, and uh, next up we got Miss Stacy. 
Um, she's my friend from Twitter that I've, I've been interacting with for a while. She's also Canadian. If uh, Please don't hold it against her. She didn't do it on purpose. Um, <laughs> don't make me spell anything <laughs> or, or say things like about because it seems like that's a problem for you guys. Right, right. right. She, she likes to throw extra U's into, into words for no apparent reason. I don't understand it's it. It's the but, uh, Queen's but... goddamn English is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> you guys bastardized it. I can almost see the uh, flapping head and beady eyes. So do you want to you want to tell people what you're about, what your uh, mission in life is? If you, oh goodness, I put on a bathrobe, so I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I don't really have a mission in life right now. I'm just glad to still be here. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, we'll move on to uh, Trent then. If he's he's also been on the show quite a few times, he likes to come in and, and give me hell every now and again when he can. Um, well, that's definitely true. So uh, you, what, you want to tell people about your, your website and what you got going on with that real quick? Yeah, I am uh, I run the Gentlemen's University of Manliness WordPress blog and the Reverend Gentleman Facebook page where we deal with basic business concepts, manipulation techniques, and pretty much life skills in general. I'm going to be expanding into podcasting in the coming weeks on Anchor and hopefully my own YouTube channel again. Right on, right on. And, and, and just anytime, anytime you want me to send out links or anything like that or just shout you out just uh let me know and i'll be sure to do that for you um at any rate so let's uh let's let's move on to um the practice unsafe section of the show it's a quick lightning round i'm gonna ask you guys each a uh, a couple questions just give me a give me the quick answer right off the top of your head um so we'll we'll just uh, we'll go in the same order we we just we've been going in and we'll start with uh anthony here um would you rather have a paper cut on your eyeball or a sewing needle under your fingernail Sewing uh, under the fingernail. Yeah, let's go with that one. Mr. Mr. Keith, calling all Keith. Oh, that is my turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Keep Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh shoot, I'd, I'd have to go with the fingernail, man. That. that uh... Both of them sound uh, about as equally painful, but uh, no, don't mess with the eyes. Yeah, that's no. <laughs> and and Stacy, uh, Stacy, what, what about you? I'm gonna go with the eyeball, no question, because I've had experience with both, oh. and the eyeball is much easier to treat; it heals faster. No kidding, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. and you're under your fingernail. Think about that. Everything you touch is like, ouch. There's pain. It's like, forget that. <laughs> Over here, like no, no, no. <laughs> what about you, Trent? What would you prefer? Uh, I would have to go with the fingernail, despite the fact that I do have experience with both, but I don't experience the pain for the other stuff. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Question number two: On a scale of one to ten, how many shits do you give about the royal wedding coming up this Saturday? Zero. That was not an option, but we'll we'll take it anyway. Uh, I'm making it get an option. <laughs> well, I could pass a shit. Oh, well, all right. All right. That's a good answer. Good answer. Um, I, I ran so out of shits that I have no fucks either. Like, I Ooh. just don't care. Right I just on. want it to be over. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. And, and, and it hadn't even happened yet. I'm already tired of hearing about it. Well, you know what, though? They didn't come to my wedding. Why the hell do I need to watch their bullshit? I know, I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, like, why would I, I mean, if I, I want to watch, off. if I want to watch the wedding of an uh, of somebody who's irrelevant and really doesn't make a difference on the world stage, I'll just watch my own wedding videos. That, that's, that's kind of what I said. I mean, <laughs> mine were equally exciting. I'm sure. What about what about you, Trent? Are you gonna are you gonna buck the trend and you're gonna say you totally care about this? No, it's whatever the lowest on the scale is divided by half. Divided by half? Can you divide zero by half? Because yes. Anthony just made the bottom of the scale zero divided by half. I think that's a number. <laughs> In ma matter of fact, we should ask Siri what zero divided by zero is. All right, so so the next question. This one's an interesting one that just came across my consciousness consciousness here a little while ago. And there's an audio clip going around the internet. You guys remember the old um, black and gold dress versus green and you know whatever colors yes. it was? And everybody was like having white and gold or blue and black. Yeah, yeah, whatever the colors were, it, it was really, it was a huge debate. Now, now we've got this um, new audio here that uh, it's, it's, it was found on a vocabulary.com website. It was just a little audio button you click to find out how to pronounce a word. And people have started uh, noticing that 
different people are hearing the the uh, the sound file differently. So I'm going to play it for you, and I want to see what you guys think it says. Um, the, the, it, uh, some people think think it says Yanni, and some people think it says Laurel. Which, if you just hear those two words by themselves, you're like, what in the world? They sound it's totally different. But anyway, uh, let me let me play this for you here. Go ahead. Laurel. One more time. Laurel. And one more time. Laurel. Okay, so what are you guys hearing? Sounds like Laurel to me. Okay. Uh, I've heard this I'll have to rest on my laurels on this one. Keith? Laurel's it. That's the only thing it could possibly say. And what would you say, Keith? Uh, I said I'm resting on my laurels. Okay. Trent, <laughs> did you hear Laurel as well? I heard Laurel as well. Okay, so this is what's interesting to me is I, I played the clip... Uh, when I first heard it, it was on a podcast, and I heard it at work. When I first heard it, I heard Laurel. When I came home, I saw it come up on my Facebook feed, and I went to play it again. I heard Yanni. I could not hear Laurel at all. I kept hearing Yanni over and over, and I was like, what in the world? So I went and grabbed the same podcast I was listening to earlier that day and tried to recreate the conditions as exact, exactly as I could. I went and put my same work earbuds in. I had the same iPod and everything, and I pushed play. And now I'm hearing Yanni. I'm like, what in the world? And the only thing I could think of is maybe there's, you know, a higher noise level around work that made me hear it differently. Well, now I played that audio clip for you guys and I'm hearing Yanni. So it's really driving me nuts because I'm hearing it both ways. It's blowing my mind. I've never even thought that was possible. But I'm just I was just curious if you guys heard different different things. I know my family did. But we were we were divided about half and half between who was hearing what. It was uncanny. So at any rate. I think that cap of yours might be on too tight there, but I think I might have to agree. <laughs> Maybe all of us was wearing hats too tight. I don't know. It was really weird. I, I don't. I don't understand it. Um, but I guess it's just something to do with the way we. I, I don't. I'm not even going to try to give you the scientific explanation. But you can. You, you can look that up on YouTube. It's. It's out there already. Um, the the rationale behind why different people hear it differently. It's. It's. It's really weird. It's really weird. Anyway, so. Before we move on to the main subject, I wanted to talk about the uh, crypto blockchain innovation of the week. And as, as a full disclosure, um, I'm, I'm actually on, I, I recently joined the team uh, in order to help in the marketing department for this particular company. Um, I've been creating some of their uh, how-to videos um, as far as how to actually operate the program or the, uh, the website. At any rate, but um, that being said, um, the... Uh, Okay, we're, we're talking about, uh, sorry, social wallet. Um, social wallet, uh, just in their own words here, I'll just read it right here. Um, social wallet has built a platform that allows one social media account to send cryptocurrency to another social media account, even if the recipient is not expecting it or has never heard of it. Now, the, the reason I thought this was really cool, I, 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 you know, let me let me stick to my notes. I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and play that video for you it's only about a minute or so just so you can get a better better idea unmute it and you're gonna have to switch it over all right oh sorry sorry miss producer as if she hasn't done this before anyway I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this video for you guys and let you let you see what it's about here here at social wallet we are changing the way people interact on social media by taking traditional social media sites like facebook and twitter and integrating our unique blockchain technology design. We have enabled peer-to-peer -peer transfer of cryptocurrency over existing social media networks. You can now send money to anyone on social media and they don't even have to know it's coming. Our process is so easy that anyone can do it in four simple clicks. Our platform now offers the easiest, fastest, and least expensive option when wanting to send money anywhere in the world. With our competitive advantages over traditional companies like Western Union and PayPal and Venmo, we are revolutionizing how money is sent. And with our integrated social wallet debit card, you can easily spend your funds anywhere in the world. Providing an inexpensive and easy way to send money is one thing, but our true mission is so much more than that. 
With our easy to use application and our extensive reach through social media, we can now teach millions of new people about how amazing this new blockchain technology truly is and show them how it is already changing the world. All right. So what's got me excited about that particular application of blockchain technology is the fact that um, their their mission is to try to educate the world on how to use cryptocurrency. It's 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 set up so that people can kind of get a, a, a introduction to how the cryptocurrency world actually operates with a very small investment. You know, if if say somebody sends you a, a dollar of of social wallet, which their their token is called Wire. If somebody sends you a dollar fifty worth of Wire. And then a lot of people are getting interested, like, what is this? How do I how do I do this? And then all of a sudden they're having to learn how to actually use this platform and, and use cryptocurrency and, and start to learn how to set up a wallet and, and, and learn how to keep your private keys uh, you know, safe and all that good stuff. And what I think as far as what I think I'm going to use it for the most is um, imagine when you're walking down, you know, say the streets of Nashville and you see uh, a guy out there playing music and he's got his little guitar case out in front of him and, and, and he's playing something cool. You throw a quarter in there, you throw a dollar in there, you know, you think, you know, he think you think he's doing a great job. You want to tip him. Well, problem with current models online is it's a pain in the ass to go ahead and, and tip people a nickel, a dime, you know, a quarter, it, you know, it's just super cost ineffective. It's clunky. It's awkward. You got to go through services like PayPal or Patreon or, you know, some other mechanism to make that happen. And then that third party company is also taking a, a, a cut off the top of it. So you're not only are you trying to give them a tip that you, know, you can only do a certain minimum amount. It's, it's just it's a pain in the ass. And what this does is let you say, OK, I see somebody on Twitter made an awesome post. That shit made me laugh my ass off. I'm going to go ahead and send them a dollar for their for their brilliant tweet. All I need is their their. Uh, Twitter handle, I can send that to them. That simple. And you saw on the video, it's that simple. You just fill it out once you got it all set up, and you send it to them. And then it'll 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 notify them via email, whatever email they have set up behind their Twitter account. So what do what do you what do you guys think of that? Just the general idea. I didn't let you guys have the floor for a minute. I can see well, this. Uh, being first of all, I would say you know, quit being uh, such a cheap bastard and giving that music artist a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I, I, I think the that that te new technology is, uh, is is definitely impressive. Uh, ease of use is always a, a good thing. Um, paranoid security guy over here is um, is always cautious of, of that sort of thing. That uh, just just to remind that with every new ability comes with its own vulnerability. Uh, with uh, so many people's uh, Facebook accounts getting uh, hacked and Twitter accounts getting hacked, um, this this opens uh, the door uh, for a lot of uh, identity thieves and people that want to exploit uh, these compromised accounts. Uh, there, I think there would really need to be a focus on uh, being able to protect those uh, those keys. Uh, kind of like you were saying, Daniel, that uh, a lot of it's going to go into uh, uh, educating users on how to uh, protect their investments, and I think that's uh, neat that uh, Social Wallet has uh, has that uh, that focus. Um, I'd be interested in looking into it myself. All right. Well, I'll, I'll definitely, um, like I said, the, the links will be in the in the description for you guys to check yeah. out. Um, and 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 I and I do understand your point, and it, I like the reason I like this particular entry point for people as as newbies is the fact that it it is pretty low impact low cost you know if, if somebody sends you a dollar and you lose that dollar is, is it really yeah, that right. deal? Yeah. so you know the level of security doesn't necessarily have to be you know super stringent it's not like we're dealing with right. millions of dollars right yeah, off. yeah for, not right now but if this, if this catches on definitely right. something to think about yeah. right yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely which you know as as you get into it more you'll end up you know improving your security which i have done as i've started to invest more money into different cryptos is just making sure i'm keeping all my stuff separate you know i, I don't put all my eggs in one basket so to speak so it's it's a, it's a man i don't know <laughs> it's a, it's is it going to gonna take a while for this to kind of catch on and to take off i guess would be my question is it going to take i mean if they're already on i mean if they're on social platforms already is this something that they're seeing a lot of people wanting to use right now 
Uh, this is still, as far as I know, it's a, still a relatively new technology. Um, this particular company ha uh, hasn't been around that long. And they're actually getting ready to go through their final, let's see, let me make sure I get the dates right. The uh, final week of their token sale will be held from May 25th to 31st. Um, so if you guys want to get in on that, I think they give you a, like a little discount or something like that for uh, investing early or purchasing some social tokens early. Um, I did that myself and ended up getting like 25% extra on top of um, whatever I had initially purchased. So, um, it's, it's so obviously there's an audience that wants this then. I mean, there has to be a pretty big audience that want to that wants to push this forward. Obviously, right, right, and and of course the network effect will come into play as more people start using it and start receiving it and start you know becoming familiar with wire as as a means of you know uh, value exchange. Then it, it'll it'll start to pick up as things go on. And I'm I mean this this particular project and the reason I was interested in it and approached them about making videos and helping out is because this one I can actually see becoming something bigger um, just just from the fact of they're taking it from an educational standpoint with the understanding that people don't really quite understand what this blockchain thing is just yet. I still don't. And I've done a lot of research on it. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. People are they're, they're getting better at trying to explain it. I've been trying to get better explaining it every time I. I talk to somebody new about it. I'm trying to approach it from a different way to see what kind of sticks and what makes more sense and what analogies I can use, you know, stuff like that. So, but I was pretty excited about this particular, particular one. Just needless to say. It doesn't um, take a whole lot, Daniel. We know. I know. I get excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. So, um, onto the, onto the main topics of the show, uh, I wanted to, um, give a, give a quick, uh, notice or shout out. If uh, there's a, there's a, a march for your march for our rights rally coming up in Nashville this Saturday, and and I'm, I plan on attending it. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it's all about or how big it's going to be. Um, as far as I can tell, it's not going to be like super huge. Um, bring up tab three here. At, at any rate, um, the march march for our rights rally. I'll just I'll just read this part. Um, they say our, our founding fathers created a set of laws to protect the smallest minority of them all, the individual. Um, we're rallying in support of the highest laws of the land, the United States Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. I, I know I know a lot of the rallies that we've seen happen recently tend to be more of a, a left-leaning type uh, rally. Um, a lot of women's rights and, and uh, immigrant rights and, and that kind of thing. This one here is more focused on uh, the actual constitutional rights. So that's, that's, that's what kind of piqued my interest. And we've got a number of speakers that are going to be out there, and we'll check them out. And I was going to have somebody from uh, the one of the organizers. I was going to have her on the show tonight, but she ended up double booking, so I, I got I wasn't a priority, and that's okay because I just literally contacted her yesterday. But I do appreciate her reaching out to me, and I'll be sure to come check that out this weekend. If anybody wants to come hang out in Nashville with me Saturday, you're welcome to come on down. You know. Yes, I'll be on the next flight. Yeah, I, I sense I sense your sincerity. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know the passport, so right. Uh, yeah, I don't even have mine. I'm I'm pretty much stuck here, like the prisoner I am. <laughs> See, you know what? I don't, I don't feel stuck. I mean, I'm I'm in the best possible place for me, so yeah, it doesn't right. get better than Toronto. All right, all right. So, um, here this is the this next one here, the uh, free speech and IQ segment of the show this is something that i had heard on one of my podcasts and I, i'm, uh, I'm going to show a video clip this is toward the end of the video um i fully recommend going and watching this it's pretty enlightening in terms of um different uh how different groups you know racial groups identity groups different you know men women um and even different generations view the idea of uh of free speech and free speech absolutists type ideologies and stuff like that. Um, I tend to be a free speech uh, absolutionist or absolutist or whatever you want to call it. But I thought this was pretty interesting. So before, before you guys jump in, let me uh, play this small bit here from the uh, video. If you have high intelligence, you are 78% likely to be a free speech absolutist. If you have only above average intelligence, that drops to 56%. If you have average intelligence, declining, 
as a whole in the West. If you have average intelligence, you are only 44% likely to be a free speech absolute. Below average intelligence, 33%. And if you are of low intelligence, you are only 17% likely to be a free speech absolute. So look at this descending staircase to hell itself. And this is one of the reasons I talk about intelligence disparities between ethnicities, between genders, and so on. All right. So what are your what are your thoughts on that one there? I wonder if it goes the other way as well. I mean, if you're a free speech absolutionist, are you 78% more likely to be high IQ? Or no? Uh, I'm not really sure I understand the question. Well, what he's saying is, if you're smart, you're more likely to be all about free speech. Right. If you're all about free speech, are you more likely to be smart? Or can you be dumb as a fucking rock and still be all about free speech? I mean, you, you can. I mean... I, I would say you can. I mean, it's 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 all based on percentages of likelihood here. So I mean, that obviously well, that's leaves. That's where I was going with it. Is the likelihood yeah. the same that if you're about free speech, are you likely to be smart? I, I would. I mean, yeah. I guess that's what the chart's saying. I mean, you can say it whichever way you want because it's correlating. It doesn't necessarily say that it's you know causal, but it's certainly got high correlation. And as far as IQ is concerned, there's a huge correlation between not only how you feel about free speech, but it's it's got a lot of correlation between how you what political ideology you might be or what level of education you're going to achieve. Um, it, it's it's a very very good predictor for life outcomes and a shit ton of life outcomes for that matter. Well, it makes sense because you think about the people who, who aren't about free speech, the ones that you know if you say something you might hurt my feelings. So now I don't want you to be able to talk what, about whatever. Why? Because I'm not smart enough to defend myself against your thoughts. It's the people who aren't bright enough to stand up for themselves, to share their opinion and make other people understand them. Those are the people who are snowflakes and are afraid of what you're going to say because you might not agree with them. You might hurt their feelings and they have no recourse other than to whine like a little girl about it. I mean, smart people can tell you, hey, look, you're wrong and this is why. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, absolutely, because... If, if you start interacting with people that don't have good arguments, you tend to see a more of a lean toward um, emotions. They 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 try to pull on your emotional heartstrings. Um, they, they try to they try to beat you with sophistry and just floral, very florid floral language that doesn't really make a lot of sense when you really start breaking it down. And they end up well, kind of coming off looking like they. You just shouldn't say anything. You just shouldn't say anything because I have a right to not have my feelings hurt. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but I also have the right to say what the fuck I want to say. Yeah, ultimately. and and, and he, there's something he alluded to in there that he he pointed out that the average um, IQ level of the Western civilizations right now is dropping. It's getting worse, and as we're bringing in a lot of third world migrants and things like that, yeah, IQ levels do tend to drop because you know you're not you're not going to suddenly you you can't turn somebody into a high IQ individual. It's just not possible. I'm sorry, that's just the facts. It's a genetic thing. Almost, I think they said about with up to about an eighty percent likelihood, it is straight up genetics, less less environmental. So, as that level starts to drop in the United States, in other Western co countries like the UK, like uh, Canada, like Australia, um, you're going to start to see uh, a lot more pushback toward free speech. You're going to see a lot more people trying to press laws that silence people, or you'll see the uh, the amount of length that they're willing to allow as far as free speech. Like, okay, you can talk about all these things except for that little bit extra. We don't like that. So you'll, you'll start to see that, that goalpost moving back and back, you know, farther and farther as time goes on. It's pretty, pretty, uh, when I heard that and, and I was, I was listening to it, uh, it seems to line up really well with a lot of other research that I've been doing on the subject. And it's, it's not surprising I hadn't considered it, but hearing it makes me go, wow, that's, I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel like that's pretty accurate or, I mean, just based on your experience, what you've seen out interacting with other people or. I just don't give a shit anymore, to be honest with you. Everything's categorized. Everything's given a stat, a statistic. I'm going to say what I want to say. If it offends you, I just put on your big boy pants and go on about your business and deal with it. If you don't like it, tough shit, you know? That's life. And a lot of these people that are that sensitive to this stuff, what are you going to do when you actually get out there in the real world and somebody, a boss, 
is going to come at you and tell you, you screwed up. I mean, are you going to cry about it and quit your job because they hurt your feelings? No, I mean, no, you're going to bring uh, in the department and you're going to start pushing, pushing different policies that make it so that, you know, well, dude, no, it's, it's policy mm -hmm. after policy and political correctness. I'm over it, man. And I've gotten sick and tired of it. And it's people like me. And, and I would think most people on this show feel the same way. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I mean, we have become a society where we have to base everything off of a statistic because if we don't, then it's not true. It's false. And it's just, I mean, there's going to be some things that are going to be true because they're just a matter of fact, you know, and the way people just get their feelings hurt. I'm sorry. It's just grow some thick skin. <laughs> I, maybe that's just a different time I come from in a place where I grew up. I don't know, but I just, I, I just don't get it. I really don't. And it's just, it aggravates the shit out of me. And, you know, I'm sure I'm probably not the only one. <laughs> you remember, you remember years ago when we would say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lot of truth to that. It makes sense. And that helped me grow as a person. I'm like, I'm hearing people say offensive things to me all the time. I wasn't like the, 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 first class you know sports star of my high school i had to deal with people on a on a you know regular level i had to deal with people making fun of me i had to deal with you know it, it was just part of life and you know how and you start learning how to deal with that and take it in and like reflect it back on them and you know in my, in my case i would just use self-deprecating humor and you know because nobody's going to make fun of me better than i'm going to make fun of me you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh. well and if you're doing it and you're proving you're okay with it they're less likely to be bothered doing it Exactly. You know how many fights I've been? Yeah. You, I mean, you know how many fights I've been in my entire life? None. Zero. Big goose egg. Really? And I have a I have a feeling it has a lot to do with my my intellect, my ability to get along with people pretty well, um, my ability to read people, and my ability to use self deprecating humor to to, to uh, disarm people. You know, you, you don't want you don't want to make fun of the guy that's not bothered by your your jives and your your stabs. You know. Wait, you yeah, I was bouncing at a nightclub the other day, so I kind of ran up both sides of some guy. It was a bit of a mess. He left bloody. I turned oh. out okay. Jesus. You seemed really surprised that I've never been in a fight. I'm just surprised that I've been in more of them than you have. It's kind <laughs> of a thing. I would, I would venture to say you could probably kick my ass. I've talked to you enough. I'm scared of you a little bit. Yeah, yeah probably smart. <laughs> smart people are a little bit afraid of me. Uh, you you got that you've got that blind I don't give a shit when when you when you get mad I bet. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Right on, right on. All right, so if it almost kind of worries me where we're going to be in the next you know ten years with all this too. That's what kind of scares the living shit out of me. You know, is is what I mean. If we're this way now, what's going to happen in five ten years? You know, and that's just something I've even thought about. Even with my daughter being eleven, you know, is she going to become one of these? You know, kids that turn into these adults that are just, you know, just pansies. I mean, I don't know. So not, it'll no. be interesting. You well, you, your chronologicalism offends me. I think you need to stop, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. about eleven-year-old girls, nobody else. <laughs> so, so, Anthony, I know for a fact your girl's not going to turn out the way that you, you're saying you're worried about. Because no, she won't. She right no. And I know for a fact my kids aren't going to turn out that way. Because I, I'm very involved in their life. I know how they interact. I know how I'm teaching them how to deal with people and, and teaching them how to use that self-deprecating humor. And, you know, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll know how to deal with the real world. So I, I don't have any worries whatsoever that our kids are going to turn out that way. Um, yeah, but you got to remember, here, too, the kids they hang out with when they're in school as well. You know, the people they surround themselves with outside of home. No, I get it. I get it. And that's that's kind of your responsibility to make sure that, you know, at least whip their it. ass with the belt. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> so so uh, to answer your question about if you want to know five to 10 years from now, what um, what our country is going to look like? Um, I don't think you need to really look any farther than the UK right now as far as how they're handling different, you know, uh, instances of free speech. How You know, the reason they had that giant rally down there a couple weeks ago um, they're 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 trying to silence anybody that has any problem whatsoever to do with the the Islamic and Muslim culture. Uh, um, you can you can look and kind of see how uh, how they're operating things right now as a, as a general template for how we may end up being if things keep continuing down this path. If enough of us don't stand up and say, "Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, no, 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 no." Well, I think your <laughs> president is 
standing up for you guys, though. I mean, you guys have a person in power who I don't really think is a politician or worth shit, but nonetheless, he's there. And it's his job, and he is standing up for the country. He's saying, we're not letting you in if you're not going to assimilate. And, and if you don't assimilate, he's like, fuck it, get out. He's really standing up for America and for what America is supposed to be about. I think that it, it, the Canada is going the way of the UK and Sweden. I yeah. mean, we're, we're, we're doors open. I mean, our prime minister's out there with his legs open, just inviting everybody in. Yeah, and it's Canada, freaking awful. Canada's probably about five minutes behind the UK right now. And it's, it's like, it's well, not that's what you guys are still a mile away. And when your neighbor turns into a shithole because of it, your president, whether it's still Trump or somebody else gets in there and whatever, whether it's Pence or it's freaking Trump, in any event, I mean, he, they're standing up for themselves and they're watching us go downhill in a hurry. I think that from that nearby experience, I mean, they've got a shithole under them, about to have a shithole above them. I think the likelihood of them saying, oh, well, let's just do what they did. Because that seems smart. I mean, you've got Mexico that can't wipe its own ass underneath. And then Canada who was okay and now is suddenly this open door policy to let people come in and rape and pillage our culture, which is kind of what's happening. Do you think it's possible here in the next maybe five years that we'll start to see a lot of issues coming from uh, people in Canada trying to migrate to the United States that, as a result uh, no. of No. No, I don't think it'll go that far just because we, as much as we bitch about the way things are going, mm -hmm. uh, Trudeau, friggin' pansy boy, he's going to be gone in 2019. So he's, he's out in no time. He, and he's even not, beyond not. that, we are, we are pretty attached to our, our political system and to things that you hate, things like our free health care, our free dental care, our free child care. Apparently we can get knocked up and somebody else is going to pay and watch our kids. I, I didn't know that before I decided not to have kids. I really missed the boat there. Like, well, if, I could have had a whole bunch. If it, were, if it were truly free, then maybe I would consider it, but there's no such thing as free. Well, you know what? It really, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it costs somebody else, right? I mean, it doesn't really count if you don't have to pay for it, and that's yeah, what we have yeah. going here. Yeah. We're going to leave here because we're giving that's everybody everything for free, well. which is where all <laughs> immigrants, it's the same thing with the immigrants. They're coming here because everything is free. Yeah. That, like, yeah oh, you're having more kids? Paying. Let's move you into a five-bedroom house, and we'll pay for it. Yeah, they're 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 not migrating of their own accord. They're getting paid to migrate. That's that's they're getting you know the bait's been set out, and our, and that's what our government sponsored uh, more than forty thousand families from Syria. The, the, the first run of them, they're still sponsoring more. But the first run of immigrants from Syria, they sponsored some forty thousand families. There are still some of those families who are put up in downtown fancy Toronto hotels on the federal dime. And they get a per diem to eat every day. Right. They will bring in the whatever the hell that halal meat and whatever for them, because that's all that they will eat. And these people are on TV saying, "Oh, well, if we knew it was going to take this long to get a house, uh, we would we would have never came. We just want to go back home." And I'm thinking to myself, "Here's your plane ticket, bitch." <laughs> take all your kids with you just go now, now that that's that's kind of the uh, dark side of free right there though when when you start to you know try to through compassion or whatever rationale you try to pu push it through when you're trying to give away free stuff to people pe more people end up wanting free stuff you know it, it makes people less likely to work for it themselves and you kind of have this you know well, this I, I think the problem is no. that Canada over promised I mean they the, the government when they sponsored these people said yeah sure we're gonna house you and wait, where wait, does everybody wait, want wait, to wait, go? Wait, 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 You're talking about uh, a, a government makes promises they can't keep? You No. Exactly. No. no. <laughs> but I mean, when they promised housing to these people and we're going to make you citizens, we're going to let you have a job, when they did that, they didn't, uh, they didn't put into effect the, the fact that we have a 0% vacancy rate in Toronto where these people want to live. So there's nowhere to put them. I mean, I've already suggested that I could move into the refrigerator box on the front lawn and 18 of them can have this tiny one bedroom apartment that I live in because we're really at a point now where I'm looking for an apartment for four months. I haven't seen anything available. There's nowhere to put these people. They're living in hotels because the government can't even find a government housing for them because there is no vacancy. Jesus. Uh, at any rate, um, I, I certainly do hope that, you know, people pull their head out of their ass eventually and see where this is going. 
not likely going to happen because that would require somebody to actually have a little intelligence. And as the general trends are going, that's not looking very promising anytime soon. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going I'm to move on to the next subject here. We've got about 20 minutes left. So let me, uh, let me, there, there was, there was a recent, uh, Supreme court ruling that overturned a federal ban on sports gambling. I don't know if you guys had heard about this or not. I could give a shit about sports gambling myself, but I think it's kind of cool that they actually did overturn this and put it back on the States. Um, to make of their own. Um, if you want to go ahead and play that clip for me, please. Uh, Waiting and waiting. My producer's running slow. Here, right, here you go. Monumental ruling for sports gambling on Monday. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled to allow New Jersey to have sports betting at its racetracks and casinos. The Supreme Court announced that the legalization of sports gambling requires an important policy choice, but the choice is not ours to make. Congress can regulate sports gambling directly, but if it elects not to do so, each state is free to act on its own. The ruling could allow up to 25 other states to seek similar measures and could open legalized sports betting across the country. In the wake of the ruling, DraftKings has already announced the intention to allow sports betting through its app. All right. So, yeah, sports gambling. And what was that? What was that? Company again, DraftKings. Yeah, I've, I've heard I've heard all about the DraftKings thing that was going on a while back. And when they first came out, people were going nuts for this particular platform, getting on there and being able to bet on you know outcome of different sports and things like that. And they were making a shit ton of money. People on the platform were making a shit ton of money, and that shit got shut down so quick. And I think they ended up taking the uh, federal government to court over it. I don't know what the uh, arguments were. I just heard about this recently, but. Um, I was just curious what you guys, how you guys feel about gambling in general as a, as a general concept. If it, if it should be, le you know, banned, legalized, should we, you know, allow people to do that? Should we not allow people to do that? Or what would you, um, Trent is, legal. Hand. Trent is raising his hand like the good class. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll let Trent head, head us off on this one. He's been awful quiet over there the whole time. What yeah. Gambling has been part of, human civilization since before their civilization. Even Chinese funeral rites incorporate gambling as part of the mourning process. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that certain groups tend to go more toward gambling than others, but I personally don't like gambling. But I think people should be allowed to choose to destroy their lives if they want to. It's their money. <laughs> as long as they as long as they have the money, they should be able to do what they want with it. If they want to gamble on something, if they want a small rate of return, they can do whatever they want. As long as they're not murdering somebody or stealing from someone in order to pay for their habit or for their uh, practices, that's what I'm looking for, I'm completely fine with sports betting and things of that nature. Stacey, you look like you had something to say. I have a question. And, and something to say, but um, who regulates or does anybody regulate gambling in the United States? I mean, in, in Canada, I used to work for Ontario Lottery Gaming. So that's the, literally, they regulate all gambling. So things like when you buy a lotto ticket, you buy a scratch ticket, you go to the casino and you put money in a slot machine or you bet on poker. Or if you're going to bet like pro-line and bet on like basketball or some garbage we're not allowed to bet basketball here because we have a could, basketball team but i could be totally wrong about i could be totally wrong about this but the way i understand it is that a lot of your like the lottery tickets and things are handled through the state um you actually have federal lotteries as well i think the the powerball is done federally um or nationwide um as far as gambling and slot machines and stuff you you have to, I, I imagine there's a shit ton of like specific laws you got to pass because there's very few locations, uh, namely like Las Vegas. They've got the ability to do it um, on Indian reservations. They've got the ability to do it. And then you see like they've but got this. Does somebody regulate to make to sure, for example, that that slot machine doesn't isn't rigged? Make sure that the, the company isn't saying, well, fuck it. We're going to put a zero rate of return on this machine. Nobody's ever going to win. We're just taking your money. Yeah. I mean, are I mean, there regulations in place for that? In a in a free in a free market uh, scenario, I would say, if 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 they do put a machine in there that's got zero rate of return, 
Um, it's only going to be that machine's only going to be played for so long before people start figuring it out and going, eh, don't play that one. That thing never pays out. And they're going to go somewhere else. They're going to take their money somewhere where they actually might have a chance of winning. I mean, you do have to kind of, you know, allow a, a certain amount of winning for people to actually want to feel the need to return. There's no need for regulation in that case. Yeah, it's, it's just, basic manipulation. There has to be at least, I think it's like one in 10 success rate in order for people to stay around. Otherwise, if I just keep putting stuff in, it never pays out. No one's going to use it. If they see someone else win somewhere else, an exact similar machine, they're going to try again. So every maybe 100 individuals, you have to have them win big or have three or four individuals win just a little bit enough to give people that uh, incentive to say, I can win. I can do that. Well, yeah, but realistically, I mean, if you're doing this free market thing that you're talking about, I, I used to work in a casino up here that did slots and poker and whatnot. And, and Every single machine had the exact same percentage of payout. It was some like 94% payout. So 94% of what goes in comes back out. And yeah, we yeah, would pay out some days millions of dollars in, in an afternoon. And it I, happened. I'd rather let the company themselves handle it. I mean, it, it, you know, because it's not going to take people long to figure out that they're rigged. You know, it, it, I would much rather let the market decide who. He's going to win what 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 level of winnings is my machine going to allow you know and, and as far as just gambling in general as a general principle gambling itself i don't have a problem with it i'm, I'm with trent on this one it's like it, it, there's no victim here um there really isn't if, if i want to gamble my money on betting on sports or whatever and i end up losing all the money that was my decision and then if i i, I can learn from that decision and not do it again or i can win and maybe decided you know whatever there's there's certain things that tell me that certain signals that say all right it's time to stop and if not i've got a i've got an addiction problem that's another issue that needs to be dealt with but as far as making but it legal thing. i mean if your government is regulating it here is your, your government is regulating something that is now caused a, a addiction so quote unquote medical condition in you and basically they're now like what we do up here because our government regulates it we have a government who is regulating we are taking your rent money yeah, this month you're going to sit in front of this machine and you're just going to dump your money in there over and over and over and over until you have nothing left. To the point where we actually have a program in place here where people, if they have addiction problems with gambling, they can come in and sign up and they can borrow themselves. And then it's our responsibility to chase them around the facility and kick them out and then bring them to court and charge them for trespassing. Oh, Jesus. That sounds like a damn mess. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I just don't gamble. I just, you know. <laughs> the, the responsibility. <laughs> And they're chasing people around and taking them to court. And that's our whole job. And they pay us a ridiculous amount of money because they're government employees. Yeah. And, and we just yeah, chase people around all day. And, and, and that's another reason, you know, because you have, since it's, it is state regulated, government's got to pay for you guys to do your job. And they got to pay for everybody else to do their job. So that's going to cut into the profits or that, that 6% margin or whatever you're talking about on your yeah. machines. That's going to cut into it. Exactly. You know? And eventually, you know, what's the point to even having uh, having a gambling operation or having slot machines for mm -hmm. people's enjoyment? What's the what's the point? But if, uh, if it isn't regulated money. as a customer, I can't be guaranteed that your machine isn't ripping me off or that you aren't as an owner. And this is no longer fun, right? I mean, if I can't be sure that you're not stealing from me, right? And and, and also in a, in a free market situation, you could have certain situation. You could have certain businesses that are like the the uh, Better Business Bureau. That are they act as a regulatory body, but not through coercion. They they act as more like a, a homeowners association where you pay. You know the, the the I'm just I'm just brainstorming right at this point. I don't know how the I don't know how it would be solved, but this is a possibility that maybe uh, as as a, a casino owner, I pay this other company to you know for the right to be able to go. Hey, we're we're uh we've we've met all the requirements of this you know regulatory uh, organization here. Um, we pay insurance through them and, and, and as, in return, we get to put up their name on our marquee and, and it's a, like a sign of trust that we are, you know, legit and we're doing things right. Yeah, you know, there's there's ways you can do it with that doesn't require the force of the state. No, no, I get it. And that was, that's why I asked if you guys are enforced by the state. I don't know how your gambling works there. Um, that's I, what I, I was kind of getting off. Like as far as I know right now, the, the gambling casinos and stuff are on like Indian reservations and things. They're, they're in Las Vegas. I don't know how they handle all that. I'm not familiar with who actually regulates I'm, I'm assuming the government does have regulation over that um which i vehemently disagree with even having any regulation over it on a government level but i'm pretty sure that's how it works around here 
everything. I mean, everything we have like else. three different ones on the same. Like we have three different company or groups, government groups that regulate all the same thing. Like there's the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, then the Ontario Lottery Gaming, which is the company that actually operates the facilities. But every, all the regulations come from the Alcohol and Gaming Commission. Like even if you own a bar. They're the ones that decide if you get a liquor license or not, if you're allowed to sell you're, 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 you're blowing my mind again. You're, you're telling me there's multiple levels of unnecessary government bureaucracy to try to handle a problem? Well, of course there is, sweetheart. We couldn't do this cheap and smart. <laughs> you're we blowing have to have my a million mind again. Of hand in the pot. <laughs> uh, you're blowing my mind. Like, I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> Security guards need a separate license in order to work there. So at one point I had like an alcohol and gaming commission license so that I could work in the casino and then my security license so that I could be a security guard. Like I can't even work the door of a bar without a license. And I have to pay for that license every, so every year it expires and I have to pay for it again. If, if, if uh, none of you have anything additional to add, I'm going to move on to the last couple of subjects here. Everybody good? Um, all I can say is that my dream of Tennessee bearded uh, midget wrestling gambling is now come true. <laughs> it's coming. Are, are you the midget wrestler or are you just betting on it? I'm just bearded. I'm, I'm <laughs> actually about three inches too tall to be considered legally midget. <laughs> are you really that short? I'm five. I'm five seven. I'm not. I'm not oh, that short. Yeah. I'm average. You're a little bit taller. Yeah, I'm very average height. So, um, let me let me. I'm gonna play this audio clip for you, and 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 the, the, try not to. I mean, it's it is interesting. I, I enjoyed listening to this particular conversation between Stefan Molyneux and Owen Benjamin. He's a comedian, and um, it's not so much. I, I'm not so much looking for a commentary on the subject matter, but more so on the the lesson in critical thinking that comes along with this. So um, I'm going to play about a minute or two of this, I think. I think it's just under two minutes of their conversation that kind of st uh, stuck out to me that I wanted to share with you guys. For any of that, and I just, I, I, I really like Christians. And I, and there's a, there's some really cool atheists, but I think long term, I just don't know how you, how you just pass on this really good tradition that we have with atheism. I think in a few generations, sometimes it leads just to real horror. Well, uh, you know, the, the, the arrogance of atheists is a big challenge because there's no question that there are logical problems with the concept of God and of religion. From a purely logical right. standpoint, it's easy to chip away at that. And again, I, I say this full confession, I've done, done it in the past and all that. But what, what happens is then you get the atheist who's measuring his strength against the weakest aspect of another position. And if you just take the strongest part of your position and measure it against the weakest part of another position, it's easy to get a false a false sense of uh, security and, and superiority. Yeah. Like, you know, if you compare your piano playing to my piano playing, well, you're going to sound fantastic because, you know, I'm still working my way through 101, right? But, um, you know, there are other things I'd be better at. So if you just compare your strengths to other people's weaknesses, you do get a kind of arrogance. And for sure, when it comes to like raw logical analysis, you got to give the edge to the atheists. But when it comes to, I don't know, basic morality and the survival of a civilization and, and the capacity for people to restrain their own desire to get something for nothing. And when it comes to uh, thou shalt not steal, because atheists tend very much towards the left and to big government and the use of force rather than the use of shame and ostracism and guilt and right. self-restraint, that is a peaceful way of getting people to limit their own behavior. If you compare the strength of Christian self-regulation with the weakness of, of atheists running towards the state for coercive solutions that just make everything worse in the long run, that's a whole different equation. And uh, that's where my humility as, as a thinker sort of grew over the last couple of years. What do you, what do you all think about that there? Initial initial thoughts there. What I'm looking at is, it's it's. When I heard that, I'm I'm like, you know that that is that's absolutely true. Um, just the way people try to frame their arguments is is they'll take the weakest position of their opponent and match it up against their strongest position, and and it kind of makes them feel like they're somehow superior in their argument and that's not really the best way to, to change people's minds and, and I think that's what the show is all about is trying to actually listen to everybody's viewpoint you know and and try to actually battle bad thinking with better thinking 
without actually trying to just bludgeon them over the head by attacking their their weakest point. Does that that make sense? That was just something that I, I don't know. Yes if... and no. My basic understanding of doing a debate is to find the weakest part in your opponent's armor and to press whole hog on it because they can't defend that position. The other part is you can address everything else, but once you find that sore spot, you have to press home that advantage. Otherwise, you will lose. You'll go into con this continuous still circle. And you'll never get anywhere. If we're talking about a debate, like a formalized debate, absolutely, that's your strategy because you, you have to have that uh, ability to to do just what you just said there in order to win win because in a debate you actually are trying to win um i'm talking i think what this was talking about is more like just general conversations with people and trying to you know if you're trying to enlighten people and, and bring bring them into your way of thinking you're never going to do it by doing it that way and and the, the, the other guy on the debate stage you're never going to change his mind with that strategy it's just not going to happen but and I, th I th definitely think that, that you're right there. Um, whenever it comes to that weak point of the of the conversation, it's uh, almost insulting to, to think that you're, the person you're talking to doesn't already know that flaw. They've, uh, in a better phrase, accepted that and has moved past it and have deeper convictions. And I think what he's getting at is... Um, in order to really grow from each other and to understand uh, another person's perspective, you have to really look at the and and actually try to challenge their their deeper conviction, and uh, and discuss that and try to have a an understanding or at least a conversation on that level instead of hammering down what's already obvious. Yeah, those are the conversations I've had with people where. It, one or both of us will go, hmm, I never thought of it that way. That's that's interesting. Or, hmm, I'll have to go back and do some more research because I don't really know specifically how to discuss that. I mean, the bigger the yeah. bigger gaps in, in people's conversations, I'm sure, have been talked to death. Um, I used to be a, kind of a militant atheist when I was younger and <laughs> just almost had this this vitriolic just anger toward – not ang I wouldn't say necessarily anger toward Christian or, or – kind of, I'm sorry? Irritation is the word you're looking for. You know, I mean, it's 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 more it's more. Uh, I, I I don't really know the word. I, I don't think it's irritation, I think it's anger. It's just I was I was more militant about it and trying to like force it and like, okay, it, what you're saying makes absolutely no sense and this is why, and and it's like that doesn't really net a very good uh, environment for conversation and growth to happen is on on either. Is it possible that you were that militant then because you realized, hey, look, it's just me that thinks like this. I really don't want to be on my own trying to fight against all these people. If I can convert a couple of them, then I have a team. Then I have people to be with. Like when you're young, it's hard to reach out and find other atheist friends. Like, I mean, I come from a family of religious freak shows, and I was the only one that actually had a brain in their head enough to not. You know, fall into that trap, well, and would, it was would, annoying. I found myself militant, trying to get people on my side. Yeah, so that I, I wouldn't. I'd be, I'd be rather remiss if I didn't say that. If I, if I, if I tried to say that I had that much thought put into it, because it really wasn't that level of thought. There's a certain level of maturity that's come along with this. Um, that that's just been. It's been more a, 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 of of an evolution for me in, in areas of just. Trying, trying to figure out better ways to communicate with people rather than, you know, whether whether I think my arguments are flawless and perfect and, and I have all the facts, it doesn't matter because people don't listen to that. It's, it's just come from that place. It's, it's like people don't respond to you beating them over the head with facts. I mean, as much as you would like people to respond to facts, it's just not going to happen. It's just, that's not how we operate as people. We, we pretty much react emotionally first and then think later. I mean kind of a survival mechanism, but it is a little bit sad and lacking in terms of trying to, you know, move forward with critical thinking skills. <laughs> you gonna read that link that I sent to you? Yes, yes, I wanna catch that before we hit the end of the show, Haley. All right, so before you bring it up, I, I don't I don't wanna see it. So I, I'm trying a new segment here where we talk about, or we don't talk about, I don't even know what to call it, so I'm open to names, but basically what I'm having Anthony do 
is on a weekly basis, just send me some weird link or some news story that's a little weird that I haven't seen. I have not clicked on this link yet. So, and I'm, and she's done. Okay. Thank you. She brought it up over here and I'm trying not to look at it. <laughs> but the goal is that I don't see it until it gets brought up for the show. So, um, I'm going to need my glass. I think I sent you a link one time that, that would have worked really well for this our enormous government funded pussy hat that we have down the road. Oh, see that would see like examples like that would be perfect. All right. So, um, yeah, my, my producer, Miss Haley, she's going to go get my glasses so I can actually read this thing from. Far. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know you what? Mine, in about, mine in about 10 years, in about 10 years worth of advancements in 3D printing, you'll be able to like say, here you go, dude. And they'll show no, it and they, it'll scan it for everyone right here. <laughs> All right. So here we go. And you guys have not seen this either, except Anthony has. So it's all good. We're going to bring it up and we'll, all, we'll look at it together. Oh, geez. Somebody put their palms are. Go ahead and bring it up. All right. So we have woman fired. After cops sees laxative laced brownies. Oh dear. What? Well, a, Michigan, like a Michigan engineering company employee has been fired after police determined she baked laxatives into brownies intended for a departing colleague's send-off. Uh, Saline police chief Jared Hart says officers confiscated the tainted confections. That was that's such, that's such poetic poetry right there. The tainted confection. May 3rd, after an employee tipped off management, no one ate the brownies. Oh, that's the saddest part of this whole story. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so pissed right now. Laxative lace brownies. Oh, I'm so pissed. That's Is shitty. Saline the name of the town? <laughs> saline? I, w I would guess Saline, Michigan. That is hilarious because saline, if you, if you ingest it, like if you drink it, it will give you the massive shits. <laughs> That's why I said it to him. I was like, it was a play on words with this. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that there. I like this. Yeah, she, she did admit to it later after they actually tested the brownies for laxatives. And other employees told police there may have been tension between the woman and the departing employee, but specifics haven't been released. Hart says the woman faces no charges, but if anyone had eaten the brownies, it could have been considered a criminal act. Oh, come on. We're just trying to have a little fun at the office, guys. Come on. Come on. Maybe she was concerned about their colon health. I don't know. I know that's, that's, one, that's one way to shit on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if I had thought of that, I would have immediately went, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, Anthony, I'm, I'm going to point out that that was a really shitty article to send. I'm just, I, I'm sorry. I hey, man. Oh, come, you on. Know? come on. That was a good one. That was a good one. Keith, I'm surprised you ain't been hammering out the, the puns rapid fire. Oh, oh you, you miss it. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, well, I was like, oh, man, that's shitty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's just, so ca it's just so casual. You just. I know. <laughs> <I'm almost laughs> You'll have to put um, up the government funded pussy hat article one time because you, your American friends would not even believe that. Well, um, s send me that one one more time if you don't mind, and I'll I'll, I'll try to hit on hit on that one next week. But um, I, I, that that was I, I mean, let me know what you guys think about that particular segment. I'd like to try to do some more. That was that was a nice little bite sized segment for you. I, I think segment. that was worthwhile. Yeah. <laughs> we have a right. troll right. segment. Uh, I, I know we're I know we're a couple minutes over, but I, I really wanted to get this in there, and and I wanted to show you guys this this. It's uh, I'm gonna show you the trailer for this movie um, that I saw on Netflix. I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I did watch this and this blew my mind. This, um, if you guys have ever watched uh, black mirror series, it kind of reminds me of that. And it kind of, it kind of hints at a uh, potential future where privacy is no longer a thing. Like, who is making all that noise? I'm pretty sure it's Keith because he's moving around over there. He's over there broken his pussy. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. He's <laughs> got a pussy hat. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was a lot of effort for that joke. Kudos. <laughs> Kudos. I do admire the effort on that one. <laughs> All right, let, let me let me play this let me play this trailer for you guys and get your thoughts on this. Uh, it, it just the idea behind uh, more, more so on the tech, pay attention to the technology aspect of this. Go ahead. Uh, 
I said, you change these stairs. That's too much. It's an optical illusion. Too late. Are we supposed to be hearing it? Because I'm not hearing it. <laughs> Train that isn't there. Who <laughs> can hack a human being? How do we stop this? To find the hack kit, we hire one. What can I do for you? Calms a blank slate. She makes her living covering up secrets. She's a master editor who can erase the unwanted act on the record. Most of all, she erases herself. And now her clients are getting erased. This level of anonymizing makes all the crime possible. Anonymity is the enemy. Someone is killing my customers, trying to make it look like it's me. She's playing you. I'm not safe. Neither are you. We can't with our eyes. The system doesn't work. Hmm. All clear. Please proceed. You can stay in the Delete everything. I'm keeping my son's memory alive. What's wrong with her? You can't look back. Right. Is that it? Yeah, that was the that was the preview for it anyway. But yeah, it's it's a pretty badass movie. I fully recommend watching it, but it, it does uh it posed a very, a very interesting question. Where he said, what, what, do you, what do you say? Um, anonymity is the enemy. And one of the things that you notice at the very beginning is like, when you look around, you can see everybody's digital like file, like what their name is, who, what they do. You can see all, the, all their information about them. And for law enforcement, they get like special privileges to access even more information where they can go back and replay footage that you saw through your own eyes. And that's, that's how they solve all the crimes. And the whole thing starts out in the beginning with them going, hmm, we've got a regular old who done it now because we because they really haven't had a job to do lately because all crime has been completely eliminated because they can see everything that everyone is doing at all times. And it's like super big brother 1984 type shit here. Hmm. Do you know where that was made? The movie? Yeah. I have no idea. Did that look familiar to you or something? Yeah, I was I was at that subway station today. That's Bay Station, Toronto. That's right downtown Toronto. No kidding. That's 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 our subway station. Well, almost all movies, low budget ish movies, are done here. Oh wow! I mean, I the best that. movie here that won the best movie, best picture thing, or you know, that was made here in Toronto as well. But they do a yeah. lot of stuff in Toronto, and I think it was digital. But that was Bay Station, downtown Toronto. Oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I, I just I was just curious what you guys thought about just the idea of like every freaking thing you do is reported, like everything. You and, know what? It uh, already is kind of. I mean, not to not to yeah. the point where they can see my view of things, but all over the place there's cameras. You go outside, you're on someone's camera. Right. I mean, we're already. It seems like we're getting there right now, doesn't it? It's like mm -hmm. what the hell? I mean, it's right. not like we have uh, covert listening devices in our own homes, like uh, Alexa or the. You know the Google thing. But yeah, I'm not. These have been been apparently record reported to be recording people. <laughs> yeah, what was it? it? Was Samsung the last version of their smart TV was apparently recording people or some bullshit? Yeah, it's it's getting it's getting crazy. Where you don't you you never know you you never know. Like I have no idea what is actually watching me at all time. I have or if anything's watching me, but I, I definitely have it in the back of my mind that it's a possibility. Like I find myself you know putting my phone in a position where my camera is facing away from me sometimes because I'm like I don't know if any, I don't really care if anybody's watching me. I guess I'm not really doing anything, but that's still that's too much, man. <laughs> I'm just not I'm not ready for all that. 
Well, but, yeah, I mean, that's the scary thing. I mean, your our webcams often sit up on our, our computers or in your room there. It's, it's up and going. If you got changed there in the morning, I mean, even if your computer wasn't on, you just don't know. You can't be 100% sure that your shit's not on. And if and if people do get a hold of your, your computer, they can turn on your camera without your, your actual lights turning on to indicate that it's on. They can <laughs> they can turn on the microphone. They can turn like whatever. I'm like okay. Was it like the other girl that's usually on the show with you there? She's in her bedroom on on cam most of the time. And I'm thinking to myself, if somebody turned your camera on when you weren't paying attention, what would they see? I mean, how bad would that be? Yeah, that's that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, yeah, if you I'd guys, if you guys have a lot of money, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm single and 35, so I'd make a lot of money if my camera was on in my bedroom and I wasn't paying attention. But I fully, yeah, I fully recommend you, you watch that if if you're if you have a about an hour and a half or so. It's it's not a hugely long movie, but it's it's pretty it does does pose some interesting questions. But at, at any rate, um, I want to I want to thank you guys again for coming on today and hanging out with me. This has been a lot of fun. I know we went a little bit over. But that's okay. Um, that almost never happens. <laughs> I know, I know. I try to, I try to keep it tight. I try to keep it tight, but that's all right. I had a lot of different subjects. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of squeeze in here today. Um, at any rate, if you enjoy this this stuff and you want to see more, please subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the, the different segments. And uh, also, if uh, if you want to be on the show, like these fine folks here are, um, I've got a, a my page is all set up. You can head on over to unframeofmind.com and just click be my guest and fill out the form and let me know what you want to talk about. That's uh, pretty much it. So until uh, next week, I suppose uh, we'll just uh, keep on hanging. Uh, hey, anybody got a good closing line? Anybody want to close me out with something cool? Bye. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>